folks. I know a lot of people might be curious to what uh, electric only fishing is about. Uh, so I'm going to take a little bit, go through my boat setup, showing you exactly how I've got it uh, rigged out. Uh, we used to have on this boat, I've got a 14 foot 6, I really consider it a 15 foot uh, 1980 Cajun fiberglass hull boat. Uh, got a real good deal in it whenever I bought the boat. Uh, didn't have no motors, uh, nothing like that on it. And I've upgraded. Uh, we fished out of it for years with just uh, two uh, 109 motor guide, 36 volts. Um, ran that for years. Uh, truthfully, I mean, it was, it was very dependable. Um, couldn't, couldn't been happier whether it was set up from before, but um, our blessings that we had last year uh, becoming uh, the national champions uh, through with Elko, partnership with them uh, for the Electric Bass Angling National Championship. Uh, we've, we've been able to make some upgrades this year with the electric outboard uh, as well with everybody been talking about it for years, um, which is really a game changer in this sport is uh, through with electric only uh, as well. Uh, with big lakes is the uh, Ultrax, Minn Kota Ultrax. So I've upgraded uh, to a 24 volt Minn Kota Ultrax. Um, tested it out uh, since uh, end of last year. And man, this motor really does. It, it is mind blowing what uh, features it has for capable uh, capabilities it has. So I've got the uh, iPilot. Uh, I don't have the iPilot uh, link, the one that Basically, the touch screen uh, did not go with that one. I just got the regular iPilot um, remote, so that way I can sit there and run it from the back of the boat, which has been great. Uh, took it out a few times, um, you know, taking my kids fishing and stuff like that, and been able to be in the back of the boat, them up front. I can watch a graph, put them on fish, have the remote, has the feature where you can literally uh, press the plus or minus button, be able to go forward or backwards left or right, all depending on how many times you hit it is how many feet you go in that direction. So um, this Minn Kota Ultrax, I know, um, is going to have a, a lot of good use to it uh, this upcoming season. Couldn't be happier with it so far. So um, one of the things I recommend a lot of folks um, has got a lot of problems with with, with trolling motors and fish finders is uh, the noise uh, interference that, that relays through to your fish finder. So the way that I've done it, and I've, I've, I've upgraded this year, changed a lot of things around on the boat, but I decided to have one separate battery that runs all my utilities and my fish finder, which before I'd always had it attached to uh, my other batteries for the one of the uh, trolling motors, which had a lot of interference. I would only get, you know, with, with my trolling motor, I could keep it about uh, from 7 up to about 110%, whatever, um, to maximum speed and that was the only way I could get a clear resolution from the actual uh, fish finder unit itself so anything below that it would get a lot of interference so one of the things I've learned between isolating it away from one of those batteries as well as um, you know you can do your research with it your transducer cable trying to keep it away from all your power supplies um, because once this wire gets you know a lot of people zip time to it once you zip tie it directly to one of these wires um, it gets a lot of interference and noise through it. So um, coming down, I don't even come down through the, the, you know, the cable assembly as far as the direction for the, the cable uh, steering system. I don't even run the power supply down through with it. I come down through the mount. Uh, I've got a plastic sleeve that I've, I've got it isolated within as well as zip tied to the frame. So that way it ain't necessarily directly onto the frame. Um, going into uh, the bottom of the boat back to the battery. So uh, main reason is also with the Minn Kota Ultrax going with it uh, is the capabilities that's out there uh, with these units for Humminbird Helix. About a couple of years ago, we made the upgrade to a Humminbird Helix 9, side imaging, down imaging, sonar, GPS functions. Um, unreal what this thing does. Um, last year, I wound up going ahead and buying the Auto Chart Pro uh, software with the zero lines card with these small electric only lake reservoirs that we fish. Um, you know, the big boat lakes, they've got their own Navionic cards, topo maps that already preloaded by the software, plug it into it, you've got all the topos. 
unfortunately for us with our guys fishing these small reservoir lakes, we don't have those topo features. So we're the ones that's having to go out physically making these maps. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it, it has been, in my opinion, having a unit is one of the no, most number one key elements as an angler. Um, the way technology's got with these things, being able to see things. Um, I spent a lot of days going out mapping last year on these small reservoir lakes, come back home, uploaded the maps onto my uh, desktop, and able to sit there and study those maps, see those transition flats that I've never really seen before. So uh, it, it really, really helped out uh, to be able to know right exactly where we was going to start at. All those years that we've known maybe that this flat's where these fish are spawning at, um, we were able to go key in directly to where those fish were at. So Hummingbird Helix is what I've, uh, we went with, and pair, being able with the capabilities of pairing it up through with our Minn Kota, um, it's definitely going to be a game changer for us. Um, so down here, uh, well, back to this with, with the switch uh, that I've got installed here, uh, rocker panel switch that literally cuts power to the fish finder. So that way I'm not sitting there um, having power directly to this. A lot of people uh, has had problems. I know I've had with it. Uh, the rubber cover on it, when you go to press and seal it down on it, the power button will wind up getting bumped. Then it'll kick on. Once you take your cover off, it's already on. So I've got a rocker panel switch on it, so it kills the power directly to this, so I ain't got to worry about that when I'm in, in towing between lake uh, and home. Um, but uh, this switch that I've got here underneath here, if, if folks don't have this tournament fishermen's, uh, I'm going to tell you something. We, we put this on the boat last year, and uh, I'm going to tell you something. I have, I have been very pleased with this automatic timer, um, basically where you can set it to increments to where you can either run it, uh, run it all the time, or you can set it at one minute on, one minute off, three minute off, one minute on, or seven minutes off, one minute on. So this timer, I've got it directly here, so that way whenever uh, we get our fish in a live well, I'm up here and able to control directly to how I want that set. So uh, we'll take and go through the rest of the boat, uh, show you uh, the back of it. So here at my side console, um, whenever we took and first started fishing out of this boat, I actually took and cut the console out. Uh, that way it would give me more floor plan, being able to move around in the boat. Um, but with adding uh, the electric outboard onto the boat, uh, took and basically riveted back into uh, the console. Um, did a lot of new upgrades. I went with a new uh, panel switch uh, that I got from Amazon uh, I'll make sure to in the comments below leave a link so that way you can see exactly uh, the panel switch that we went with it's got um, uh, basically a cigarette adapter plug uh, for one port uh, it's got two USBs uh, at one amp or 2.1 amp uh, they also have a voltage meter that runs directly for the utility battery, so that way I know how many volts is running just on my utilities. Um, basically, I got all my uh, switches here. Um, got my LED lighting that I really just only use during nighttime fishing, night events. Uh, basically, wrap the boat with it. Comes with remote sensors in the back, so I can literally, any part of the boat, take the remote, run it to any color I want and it takes and illuminates out and around the side of the boat. Uh, really helps out nighttime fishing, so that way you can see, uh, don't even have to have a, a cap light and be able to you know, look exactly where the fish is at. I, I can see a fish as we're reeling it in, 10, 15 feet, 20 feet from the boat as we're reeling it in. So it really helps out netting fish at nighttime. Uh, basic panel switches that I've got through here, navigation, stern lights, uh, bow lights, uh, live well fill, uh, as well as bilging pump out. So uh, then I've got all that on a separate rocker panel switch that I can cut on and off so that way I'm not sitting there having battery power go directly to all the time. Uh, I've got a voltage meter that I've installed uh, that's on directly onto the 48 volt uh, electric outboard system uh, that comes with two uh, readings to it, percentage uh, as well as a voltage. I pretty much use the voltage side of things uh, whenever I'm out during the day. Um, got the steering wheel that I wound up buying and putting in on the boat 
Um, did not go with hydraulic steering. Um, you know, just for, for cost reasonings, it costs so much. Uh, I just seem rather go with um, uh, basically the um, rotary style steering. So uh, for the electric outboard itself, it comes basically with on and off kill switch. Um, so that way you can have it. And then as well, uh, whenever you're wearing the life jacket, stuff like that, which I'm a big component on wearing my life jacket uh, while I'm out there on the waters now. Used to not be, but I've gotten now where I, I wear it all the time. It's basically that real thin one, so um, that's the automatic manual inflate. So basically with it, it comes with a clip, so where you clip it yourself whenever you run down the lake with an electric outboard. Say if you were to happen to fall out, you can literally pull the switch and be able to kill your motor, so that way it don't keep running off with you. So that's a good safety feature. Um, with the electric outboard, I decided to go um, between one or two options. Uh, that I had was either a uh, side uh, console mount for throttle body or a top mount throttle body assembly. Um, I'm real happy with this. I, I, forgive me on the pronounce, pronunciation of it, but I believe it's called Laborsi. Um, it, it is a really good throttle body that uh, went with it, so that way I could still have some you know, range and moving around if I want to sit down here uh, in between moving spots during the day. Uh, that I could still sit here and, and run this. So uh, the old Eagle Cuda that's been on this boat since day one, eventually she's going to get retired. Uh, we're going to wind up looking at expansions, putting a new graph back here so that way we can be able to run during the day and look and stuff. So um, the putt for the Minn Kota, uh, it was very, very easy to install. Uh, literally drill the holes, mount it through. Like I said, I've got it on a rocker panel switch so that way this does not have constant power run to it all the time or else it'll wind up eating that utility battery. So very simple to pair up, helps out for accuracy for the spot lock feature. Um, I did shift some of the battery weight around in the boat. Um, back last weekend I had all seven batteries in the back compartment and it, it really, I, I could see a massive difference from what it's ever been before. So I've relocated two batteries, the, the 24 volt uh, batteries for the Ultrax uh, I moved them around during the week last week, went out and test run it yesterday, see how b battery placement uh, works in the boat. Uh, could be happier with these two batteries up underneath the console. Um, kind of takes away from a little bit of leg space, but for the most part I sit on top of the live well, or my partner does whenever we're moving around from the daytime. So um, couldn't be more happier also with the, the setup as far as the console. Uh, for my first time going through, put the plate on here, painted it. Uh, not the best, but um, I I'm real happy the way this turned out. Uh, always have safety features on the boat. Got a fire extinguisher. Uh, believe it or not, I have got into a circumstance. My partner, JV, remembers it when we went and fished a uh, local pot tournament. Had my electrical wires uh, run through my latches and just literally the latch closed on top of the, the, the wire. And about a shame to admit that, but... Uh, it's back during my younger years, and uh, of course, after time, somebody standing on those latches, it eventually wore down the wiring, uh, shorted it out, and melted down a battery post terminal. So, make sure safety is the biggest key uh, while being on the water. Um, I always learn the hard way. So, um, we'll go back to the back of the boat, and I'll show you the electric outboard and the battery compartment. Here's the back compartment. I've got uh, my batteries. Like I was mentioning earlier, um, I had seven batteries back here weekend four last, and the displacement on this boat was, was very, very poor, uh, sitting in the rear end very, very heavy. So um, I've displaced my weight to the front of the boat uh, to where now I've got just basically five batteries. Four of those are the uh, 4Ds is what I went with. Couldn't be happier with the run time. Uh, we run electric outboard with these 4Ds. They're not lithiums. Um, but they definitely, definitely helped me out for the, the longer run times that's needed an electric outboard. Um, talking through with Scott uh, Edwards, uh, the Elko rep here in Georgia. Um, with these jumper wires between the batteries, you got to go with at least a one gauge wiring. Uh, that heavy gauge wire helps out. Um, if you were to put a smaller gauge wire, you're going to be running into some problems with uh, overheating. Um, the wires not being able to carry those loads. Um, these electric outboards push a lot of power. So, um, my other fifth battery that's back here, 
Uh, and that's all that I've got. Um, it's AGM 31 series uh, that runs just my utilities alone. Um, so between the 4Ds, the 4Ds weigh uh, right at 73 pounds a piece. My AGM 31s, they're roughly around, I think, 62 and a half pounds. So um, displacement as far as having the two uh, 24 volts up underneath the console, that really helps out displace the weight a little bit better. Uh, as far as onboard chargers, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very strong component of having onboard chargers. Um, I've got a, a four bank system and as well as a three bank system. My four bank system is isolated directly to the electric outboard, so that way it's just charging just those four batteries of the four Ds. Then I have the three bank charger, which actually charges my 24 volt system to my front trolling motor as well as the one utility battery. So. Uh, when I come back at the end of the day, uh, I take, I've got installed these ports uh, into the boat where literally the power supply is connected directly from the uh, onboard charger. Uh, NOCO Genus makes these uh, uh, little deals where you can drill into your boat. Uh, they're rubber sealed, so that way they're water resistant. So that way when you come back at the end of the day after running uh, on these electric only lakes, um, you can take your drop cord hook directly into the power supply. Once they're fully charged, then you can unplug them, um, cover them back up. You're ready to go back fishing. So, um, my compartment, as far as my simple storage, all my life jackets. Um, got my. I strongly recommend this for a lot of folks if you haven't already. Uh, definitely invest in you want one of these uh, watertight boxes. Uh, helps you keep everything in you need. I've got all my registration for the boat. Uh, as well as some little TP. Everybody needs TP when they're out on the on the lakes. You never know when emergencies set in. So always come prepared. Got a, all my tools and uh, uh, carry some extra, you know, parts as well for my trolling motor. Uh, never know when you're going to run into a tight spot, and you need to make sure you've got carrying all your accessories needed. Uh, my live well that I've got here for the tournaments. I don't know the gallons on it. It's basically what came in the boat whenever I got it. Uh, I've got a uh, flow right system. I uh, bought it through Bass Pro Shop years, years ago. Um, I actually really love the flow right system. It's got the, the valve regulated, um, so that way you can literally you have your pump in that comes into it, um, which is on a separate pump. Then you also have your reset pump and your pump out. So basically all you're going to have to have is that one pump, for your recirc or your pump out and it's valve regulated uh, through that system to where you literally either uh, push it in or pull it out. That way it can take and recirc or pump out. Um, so two pumps is what I got running for that. Uh, also in the back I've got my bilge pump uh, that whenever we're out, which weekend before last we had to utilize it uh, many, many times keeping the water pumped out. Uh, I'd like to upgrade and get a uh, uh, an auto float on it so that way it automatically kicks on so that way I can just keep fishing during the day. Uh, but let's jump back here to the back and I'll I'll go through the electric outboard. What's going on folks? Sorry for the change of lighting. I had to go inside with the family, spend some time with them for a little while. We've got the boat backed into the garage here. Going through the transom, letting you know everything that I've got. We're very fortunate this year, me and my partner uh, Jeremy Vaughn, JV, uh, we participated in the Elko Electric Bass Angling National Championship. Uh, second year it's ever ran was last year. Uh, this is its third year starting into 2019. Looking forward to it. Uh, but we had a very fortunate year last year during the Elko eBank, and you know, spent a lot of time, like I mentioned to you earlier, about with the the graphing, the hummingbird helix that we've got. Uh, the, the capabilities that it offers to anglers being able to put their research in on a given body of water, it helped us tremendously. So, said we won, me and my partner won the EP20, which is equivalent rating to a 20 horsepower gasoline motor, uh, electric outboard. Uh, Elko has been around since 1893. Um, they were founded on electric motors. Uh, El Elko's been around. They, they've got a lot of research um, that's went through these motors. We decided, me and my partner, whenever uh, 
Elko offers two different styles of, of motors. They offer a tiller style as well as a remote steer. So reason why we decided to go with uh, the remote steer instead of the tiller, uh, with running a tiller, the displacement of weight, somebody would be in the back of the boat running the tiller, having to man it at all times. So if with the opportunity of displacement of battery and weight, going with a remote steer helps displace the weight to the front of the boat, which with an electric only boat setup, it's not necessarily about you know, trying to get the boat up on plane because with, with an EP20 on a boat this size, I'm not going to be able to get it up on plane. So it's necessarily about trying to figure out the shift in your weight to the front um, and balancing everything out to where you can maximize your hull speed. So uh, this motor, uh, I, I'm pushing with, with the new batteries that I've, I've already showed you earlier, um, the 4D batteries. I'm hitting it around the seven mile an hour range, um, full throttle with it, so couldn't be happier with this Elko EP20. Uh, now I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, it, it is really amazing uh, product. Elko uh, offers something that no other electric outboard. You can go out there and research all the different electric outboards that's available on the market today. Um, Elko offers a unique system. Uh, one of a kind for an impeller liquid cooled motor. So basically it's the same concept as a gasoline motor to where all the water physically comes up through the, the pump system, comes up through these hoses into the motor and physically cools it. So with running these electric outboards, as much power uh, that heat comes from these motors, that cooling from the water helps keep these motors cool. Uh, and, and I know this without a doubt, and that's the biggest thing we're running these these trolling motors for the past years. That you know they're really not designed for the primary propulsion of just running all the time. So with electric motors, you can look through there, and that's one thing you'll find out that uh, if you ain't got in the electric uh, the electric trolling motors style fishing, you start off with trolling motors, give it time, you're eventually going to start learning how to work on them because you're constantly having to do some some maintenance to them and some issues that's going to come up from overheating and, and problems like that. So with electric outboard, I know it without a doubt, this motor is definitely built to last. And really looking forward to, to continuing to run in this motor. Um, so again, we thank me and my partner, JV, Jeremy Vaughn. We thank Elko uh, for the opportunity. Um, wish everybody the best of luck during the uh, 2019 Elko eBank series. Uh, us with small water angler teams, we're fixing to start off our eBank series uh, next month. So, uh, wish everybody the best of luck. And earlier, what I was talking about for my LED lighting, this over here, uh, it's got a little sensor that comes off of it that I'm able to run the remote, change the lighting to whatever color. Um, that's the sensor for it. I can be in the front of the boat point it back here to it and be able to run it. Uh, also to mention as far as the ports that's back here, y'all make sure on my channel, uh, subscribe to it, keep an eye on it, uh, leave some comments. I'm going to wind up upgrading to a YOLO tech um, for my action camera uh, to be able to plug into it and be able to charge it and keep it going all day. Uh, they make a putty that goes around, uh, not necessarily to waterproof it, but to help out whenever you get those rainy days and you really want to run your action camera, I'm going to be able to take and hook directly to that. So keep on that. I'm going to be working out a deal with Yellow Tech to where I'll be able to take and offer these products at a discounted price. So keep an eye on it. Um, that is pretty much it. All the way from hitch to transom. Um, you know, I'm very happy with the boat set up uh, and the performance that, that it offers for us. And, you know, again... Without this Elko EP20, uh, we wouldn't be able to reach the speeds that we've got. So an electric motor, and, I, and I've watched other videos before, and it really holds some, some truth behind it is, you know, a couple of tenths of a mile an hour makes or break a difference to whether or not you're going to be faster than everybody else. And, you know, in these electric only uh, events that when you hear the word blast off, you know, it ain't necessarily 70 mile an hour to a hole as fast as you can get. It's you know, whoever can be a tenth mile an hour faster is going to be able to make it to, to that spot a little bit faster than somebody else. So 
Uh, couldn't be happier with the Elko. Uh, also, would like to take and thank George 811. You know, with our angler jerseys that me and my partner, JV, get every year. Uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't be more thankful and blessed. Uh, the, the sponsorship and the uh, commitment that we have with through with George 811. You know, when, when people see me walk in or you know other anglers that's out there and they they see this jersey and they think you know um you know he he's he's making some money off of them he, he's drawing a check in with them you know i'm not pro me and my partner doesn't want to you know proclaim to ever be pro you know i'm i'm founded and rooted in electric only I, i'm passionate about electric only stuff um but but i'm gonna tell you something it, it ain't about making the money uh, when I go out there, um, you know, any day between fishing tournaments or fishing pleasure, folks are coming up to me asking, hey, what, what's George 811? What, what's that on your shirt? They don't even know what 811 is. So I, I'm very appreciative for George 811 committed for the sponsorship through with us because it ain't about me making the money. It's about me being able to take and go out there and promote me and my partner and promote and tell people what exactly 811 is all about uh, and if you don't know what it's about you know it's involved in every one of our lives um, say if you have to move your mailbox or if you've got to go out there and move some some shrubs and some flowers that you've got around and you've got to dig and excavate around and um, you know they just think well I'll be all right I'll go out there with a shovel you know, a lot of people don't realize there's utilities everywhere underground. And one simple call to just call in 811, taking a few moments out of your time, not only to call, there's other options as well. You can go through, directly through uh, their websites, um, as well as a phone call, and let get some notification out there to all the different companies. That's what 811 is about. They coordinate all of those companies together coordinate it to where they can locate, find all their utilities in the ground, and clearly mark them. Um, so that way when you're out there excavating, you're not going to, you're, you're going to clearly, when you walk up to your yard and you see that this area is marked, this area is marked, I'm okay to dig in this area, I, I shouldn't hit anything because nothing is marked here. Still need to take precaution always with it while you're digging. Even if it's not marked on the ground, still take precaution. Uh, unfortunately, there's there's been some very uh, sad situations that's happened while folks have been digging uh, with and without calling uh, 811. So, taking a few moments, calling, taking the extra precaution uh, could save your life, not only yours, but others that are around you, and as well as it'll minimize the effect for disruption of, of utility services. Um, so, I thank George 811. For our sponsorship with them, partnership is really what I consider it to help promote Word 4811. So thank you all for, for sponsoring us, me and my partner. We look forward to the future years and the involvement uh, for the community as well. So. so folks, that's the boat from Hitch to Transom. I went over everything, showed you all of it while all were running. like to make sure to give you this opportunity to like this video, leave me a comment. Um, also, if you hadn't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to share this video. Let people know about it. Spread the word around. Let everybody know. Future months coming up for events. Hopefully, we'll get some good footage on the water. Maybe JV will be able to take and land some big fish, and I'll be able to net them for them again this year. So, uh, make sure to subscribe to us. Keep an eye on it, so that way you get notifications. Whenever I get these videos finished up, uploaded, uh, if there's some areas that you want me to take and topics to talk about, topics to, you know, research and try to give some information on, make sure to leave me a comment. Let me know some things that you'd like to, to see. And uh, me and JV will definitely be more glad to take and, you know, put it out there, and, uh, even if it's not fishing related. So, uh, again, I would like to thank our sponsor, George 811. Uh, appreciate Elko for the opportunity in the eBank National Championship. Looking forward to future years. Tune in to us. We'll be back very, very soon.
Thanks.